We have Juliet Adelstein, the Chief Operating Officer of GHC, uh, taking the stage. Please uh, give Juliet a big round of applause. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, can I just take a moment now to thank you all for making the time to come here today. I know how inspiring yet at times draining these days can be, so I truly do appreciate it. I am Juliet Adelstein, the COO of Ganarate Coin, G8C, a Ganapati Group company. Ganapati PLC is a Japanese iGaming content creator with 14 international offices. As a publicly listed company in the UK, iGaming licenses in Curaçao and Malta, and contracts with majority of the large operators and platforms across Europe and Asia, our reach within the iGaming industry is extensive. And it's precisely this reach and our desire to understand the limitations of the industry currently that led us into the world of blockchain and virtual financial assets. So today, I would likely like to briefly discuss with you all the evolution of the iGaming world into blockchain and the potential for the future. What now seems to me to be an absolute no-brainer, a year ago was completely unexplored territory for most of us in the iGaming industry. That is, that the iGaming world and the blockchain world are a match made in heaven. It's one of the few circumstances in life where both give more to each other than they take away from each other. Yet, the uptake is, the uptake is still slow. Now, this perhaps is simply a case of why change something that isn't broken, or perhaps a reflection of a much bigger problem in the iGaming industry. The unwillingness to be the first to push the boundaries and to take risks which will challenge the status quo. Now, at Ganapati and GHC, that is entirely what we are about. So, we plan on disrupting the industry in absolutely any way we can, and in particular, through blockchain. Allow me to tell you a little bit about how blockchain first came to be on our radar, as this directly links just into why blockchain is so fundamental for the iGaming world. Research into our client base, and even more so, our potential yet still unrealized client base is an essential part of our business development. Moreover, finding the right balance between what is relevant and desired differently in Europe and Asia is the prime challenge. These two can often be polar opposites. Let's see, to give you an example in Asia, the players just want the result of their spins to come up as quickly as possible. How they got to that win doesn't matter as long as the figures in their credits are increasing. Now, take Europe on the other hand, where every player is interested in how they got to their win and what the journey on the way there looked like. Now, of course, I'm generalizing here, but what I wanted to help you understand is that in these industries, Europe and Asia, what's important can be wildly different. Now, we make one product for both Europe and Asia. So, where we find differences, we also need to find similarities. And in fact, that's something that makes Malaysia so interesting to us as a company because it's such this fabulous mixture of different cultures and influences that I really think there's some answers for us as a company here. Anyway, as I was saying, we thrive to find similarities so that we can expand our business in a way which is relevant across the board. Now, in the iGaming world, there is one huge factor that resonates across both European and Asian players, and probably any player around the world for that matter, and that is the issue of trust, or the lack thereof. Now, if we had a room here of iGaming executives, I can guarantee that within 10 minutes, they would have you all convinced that the entire industry is entirely trustworthy, that there are such strict regulations, checks, and policies in place that any obscuring of the system, any attempt to scam or alter results would immediately be stopped. And you know what? There would be absolutely no exaggeration or any of bending of the truth in their words. Now, 
If the players themselves, though, don't believe this, if the players themselves don't trust operators and platforms, then none of these regulations matter. All that we've managed to do is pat ourselves on the back and go to sleep at night, convinced that once again, we have been fair and decent. Now, this is a problem that needs to be solved. So, what solves trust? Yes, transparency. And what provides transparency? You guessed it, blockchain. Now, thanks to our fabulous connections in Malta due to having our gaming license and subsequently offices there, and in particular, incredible support and guidance from the Prime Minister of, G of Malta, who's supported us from the very beginning, G8C was thrown into the world of blockchain firsthand. And what we thought was unprecedented technology that would help us create transparency off our, across our games and platforms eventually was truly just the beginning. The solutions that blockchain could provide, not just the players, but operators, platforms, aggregators, the list goes on. In fact, the entire industry are endless. To briefly cover some of them, transactions for players are, complete, are considerably easier when utilizing blockchain. By using their online wallets, deposits are instant. And more importantly, withdrawals are instant, meaning that the player feels in control of their decisions and their destinies. They're able to walk away when they're up or quickly add extra funds for that last second impulse. Further, in not having to use third party payment solutions, transaction fees are cut down considerably. Overall, costs are cut, time is saved, and the entire experience is a much more user-friendly, convenient experience. Add to this the transparency that I mentioned earlier, which would allow absolutely any player at any time to confirm that their bet wasn't rigged, that their spin wasn't unfair, that they had just as much chance as the person sitting next to them of winning or losing their bet. And you've created an online casino that speaks to the players, rather than making them feel like they're being taken advantage of at every corner. Now, whilst this sounds fantastic for the players, think about what this means for the operators and platforms themselves. An operator with their online casino on a blockchain platform all of a sudden has a product that's actually different in a sea of wildly repetitive, indistinguishable clones. And the advantages for operators don't stop there. Whilst transparency for the players is great for the players themselves, this transparency also provides the operators with huge advantages. The beauty of blockchain, as you all know, is that everyone can see everything. Everyone is on the same page and everyone becomes the security in that sense. Underground hacking and scamming on the side of the players is also eliminated for the operators, all without the operators actually having to lift a finger, as these checks will be happening constantly by various people all across the chain. Now, the players feel in control, and the operators who currently have huge teams in place and use entire resources just on preventing this scamming will have their workloads cut down considerably. Add to this, ease of administration and overall monitoring that will be supported by a decentralized management system. Lower admin time means lower admin costs, which means higher profits, which these operators can use to return it to the players, shareholders, or wherever else it is that these operators choose to share their love. Finally, and I could speak for a full 15 minutes on this subject alone, but the anti-money laundering policing capabilities that blockchain technology provides the, the iGaming industry, another huge issue in this industry, are absolutely endless. All in all, what I'm trying to get across is that what started as a project to bring greater transparency to iGaming solutions unraveled into what is now our full-blown G8C anti-ICO project. So, what is G8C and our anti-ICO project? And what exactly are we bringing to the table that is so different? Because one thing I want to clarify here is that one thing that the iGaming industry 
doesn't need more of is another ICO simply collecting funds from pre-established connections to preemptively launch their token on an exchange simply in order to artificially inflate its value. There's been more, than, more than enough of that to last us all a lifetime, I think. So, the most essential and fundamental part for us was to create a token that had an actual use, something with true value. To create a utility token that not only has a definite degree of usability, but to create something that the players, operators, and platforms would all desperately want. This has developed into the G8C. A token which, once our blockchain platform is up and running, will become the token with which players will bet directly onto our online casino. Literally, the token that we're releasing currently to early adopters and investors now will be the token that casinos are using to bet with later on the online, cas on the online casino. Now, in creating this token with direct betting capabilities and through our smart contracts, we will manage to take advantage of many of the different strengths of blockchain I mentioned earlier, all in one clean sweep. Gas transaction fees will be entirely eliminated, management and admin costs will be considerably faster, and an offline playing function will be possible for our players. Now, in creating this utility token, we've also created a product that truly stands out in one other way. We are a stablecoin. Once our blockchain platform is up and running, one GHC will always be worth one minimum bet. Now, whilst this currency that it will be set to is yet to be confirmed, let's assume, according to current market trends, that this will be approximately one cent. What we have created is a token that will be consistently stabilized to this value of one minimum bet. The token will not be launched on public exchanges and its value will not increase nor decrease. To provide our players, operators, platforms and aggregators all with peace of mind and a product that they would all want to use, this value needed to be consistent. And that is the entire premise of our token. One GHC will equal one minimum bet, something that we are able to achieve only because of our pre-established position in the iGaming industry. Only because we know how many thousands of operators with heaving numbers of casino players we're already connected to. We know the scope of these figures and they are the reason that we can confidently stabilize our token to future casino players and their bets. Finally, we're not building this blockchain platform simply for ourselves. Ganapati and GHC have been able to grow both within the iGaming and blockchain world, thanks to an unspoken network which flows between these communities. And we intend for the GHC to repay some of our appreciation and behave in just this way as well. Don't get me wrong, we know that also works in our advantage. As other operators, platforms and game providers wake up to the capabilities and opportunities that blockchain platforms can allow the iGaming industry, our wallet, exchange, token and more importantly blockchain platform will be available for others to use and implement into their own products. And it goes without saying, the more people using GHC the more the automatic flow can be maintained and the more the ultimate goal of GHC will be realized. That is, that we have managed to create what is an opportunity for early adopters and investors now and a solution for casino players, operators and platforms alike in the future. Anyway, that's more than enough on us and what it is that GHC are doing because to be honest, in this ocean of blockchain, we're just a tiny speck of sand. And from just hearing and talking to everyone I've met today, I think we can all see that the waves of change with blockchain are really upon us. So on that note, I personally love to sit down with as many of you as possible over the next two days and discuss your thoughts on everything. Because if there's one thing I keep having my eyes open to, it's that this blockchain world is far greater than any of us could have believed it would be. And if we keep sharing thoughts, if we keep supporting each other and we keep pulling each other up, then the sky's the limits. 
So thank you all for your time today. And please, if you have any time, come and meet the GHC team at our desks. We'd love to hear more from you, especially if you're interested in you know, sharing thoughts, sharing secrets, and hearing any more about investment opportunities. Thank you. Thank you very much, Juliet. I request you to please uh, remain on stage. Yes. Uh, we have a memento to be given away to you. I request uh, Mohammed Salim, CEO of Trescon, to walk up on the stage to give the memento to Juliet. Thank you very much, Juliet. So that was Juliet Adelstein.